Hello, this short video is just to run through the interpretive sequence I use when I read a breast MR. This isn't the only way to do it, um, but just make sure that you include all the elements that I'm going to discuss. This is the way I lay out the images on my monitors. Um, I use a 2x2 uh, display on the far left, the T1 gadolinium enhanced sagittal sequence, then the T1 no gadolinium fat satid axials, followed by the T1 gadolinium enhanced fat saturated axials and then on the right the peak subtraction sequence and the other sequences such as the non-fat satid um, T1 images or the T2 images I swap in as necessary. I think you need to have these images large to be able to see them and I personally don't find the advantage of seeing um, eight different sequences at once. But there again perhaps I'm just getting old. Before you start reading anything on the images, you need to check for image quality control. So, was the study adequately enhanced? Was the bolus good enough? Did the patient move? That's going to markedly affect the quality of the subtraction sequences, as well as um, some of the uh, computer-assisted detection, if there's a lot of patient movement. Was the fat saturation um, homogeneous throughout? And did we include the entire breast? And particularly, did we include an adequate portion of the axilla to be able to look for axillary nodes? And we want to be able to see pectoralis minor at least to be able to say we have adequate axillary coverage. Unfortunately, it's not that uncommon that the gadolinium dose infiltrates or is just not injected adequately to be able to get a good bolus. So the image on the left of this study here was the gadolinium enhanced image that was obtained on a patient and when we looked at this, you can see there's virtually no contrast in the heart. We're not seeing it within the um, vessels of the breast. This is an inadequately enhanced study. The study was repeated a couple of days later. Now you can see gadolinium in the heart. It's going to be the first place you'll look to check the bolus. And now you can see the enhancing malignancy, which we did not see previously. Both patient movement and inadequate fat suppression can produce artifacts. Uh, this patient was called back for uh, diagnostic imaging by the interpretive radiologist. Um, what they had noticed was there was an area on the gadolinium enhanced images here, which appeared to be larger than on the non-enhanced images, and which shows clearly on the subtraction images and in fact has washout kinetics. First thing to notice is that the uh, post gadolinium images are actually at a slightly lower level than the pre gadolinium images. So the patient moved slightly between the two studies. The second thing was identified on the sagittal. What we noticed on the sagittal images was there was a crease right on the top of the breast here where there was inadequate fat suppression. And so combining that with the different slice levels, you're going to get an artifact showing up on the subtraction images. Here is the axial non-fat saturated image at the same level, and you see there's no abnormality here. If there was a real mass lesion, that would have shown as an area of decreased signal on this sequence. You need to make some assessment of the degree of background enhancement. This is the background enhancement of the normal glandular tissue in the breast and it's quantified into four approximate ratings and this is you know of, of course something that has significant inter and intra radiologist variation when you come to assess this and i think that they may be changing these in the new birads but for the moment this is what we have um, it's separated into minimal less than 25 percent of the glandular tissue enhancing mild 25 to 50 moderate 50 to 75 and marked more than 75% of the glandular tissue is enhancing. So not the cancer, not the fatty tissue, but the glandular tissue. Just to give you an idea of how these look, um, and you really need to look at the extent of the glandular tissue in these patients, but for simplicity, I'm showing you the subtraction MIPS. These are all normal patients. You can see in this patient here, in the top left, who I'd classify as being minimal enhancement, there really is just a few little speckles of background enhancement other than the vessels. This patient, who had a predominantly fatty breast, but had a fair number of little speckly enhancing pieces, punctate enhancement within her breast. This patient here, more extensive, 
So I classify that as being a moderate background enhancement. And this patient here, who was scanned at the wrong time of her menstrual cycle, and you can see really intense background enhancement, obviously this is a scan that's really difficult to interpret, and our sensitivity of picking up malignancy is likely to be quite low. So next we'll move on to scrolling through our linked peak, which should be our first gadolinium enhanced axial image and our subtraction images together to identify areas of enhancement. Focal areas of enhancement, segmental areas of enhancement, diffuse areas of enhancement. For each of these areas that you see, you want to decide, is it real? So you're going to check the gadolinium in, uh, the pre-gadolinium image, make sure it really does look like real enhancement, that there's no patient movement in particular between those two slices that could be producing that artifact. You want to decide if it's mass or non-mass-like enhancement. And we'll be going through the BIRADS criteria for this um, in the next video. We look at the shape, the margins, the size, the position of the area enhancement, the distribution, and the kinetics of the enhancement. As I say, we'll be going through all of these in sequence in the next image, the next video. But we need to analyze these for every area of enhancement that we see. For each of these, you want to correlate it with the pregadolinium image. The T2 image, fibrocystic disease, is commonly T2 bright, for example. You want to look at the non fat sat T1 to look for the presence of any mass effect. You want to look at the mammogram in particular. It's really key that we do review these patients' mammograms when we're interpreting the MRI. You really don't want to call a patient back to have a mass lesion analyzed that turns out to be a lymph node that was present on her mammogram for many years, for example. These sagittal delayed images are very helpful for getting the third um, coordinate of size for checking the position of the lesion for clock face and another assessment on the three-dimensional nature of the shape of the lesion, whether it's a real mass lesion or non-mass-like enhancement. If you luck out and your patient has a prior mammogram, and we all pray that they do, stability is very helpful. But be very careful. If it's a concerning lesion, the same as in mammography, stability is great apart from when it isn't. If it really looks like cancer, the fact that it hasn't changed shouldn't stop you from further working this up. Cancers in the breast may grow very slowly over many years, um, and they may do that for many years and then grow quite suddenly. So don't be reassured. A speculated mass is still a speculated mass. Quickly run through the second sequence of the gadolinium enhanced in a similar manner to see if there's any um, lesions which are appearing on that sequence. Sometimes there's a delayed bolus, and so the first sequence may not be the peak, um, uh, the peak of the enhancement, and it may actually be into the second sequence rather than the first. Run through the T2 sequence separately, looking for cysts, seromas, ductolectasia, lymph nodes, which are commonly bright on T2. For any masses you see, you want to specifically look for the presence of chest wall invasion. Now note that chest wall invasion is when there's enhancement of the chest wall. Enhancement of pectoralis does not mean chest wall invasion, and it can still, patients can be still treated surgically. The surgeon just removes part of pectoralis. That is just called pectoral invasion involvement, and they obviously want to know about this, but it does have a different management sequelae. So let me show you a few examples here. So this patient with a posterior mass, it abuts pectoralis. There's even probably a little bit of tethering to pectoralis seen there, but there was no enhancement of pectoralis. If I just take that off for a moment. These little vessels here, this little layer of enhancement here is just a vessel. Another patient with a very large cancer in a small breast, again, it is abutting pectoralis, but there's no enhancement of pectoralis itself. In this patient, however, who has extensive DCIS throughout her breast, you can see that there is enhancement of pectoralis. I think it shows best on the sagittal delayed sequence here. And so this patient, the surgeon will need to know that they'll have to excise some of pectoralis, um, in this case, at the time for mastectomy. Unfortunately for this lady who had a prior mastectomy and an um, implant placement that you're seeing here, she had a large 
recurrence in the chest wall behind the implant. You can see, I think it best on the sagittal sequence here, you can see it going back all the way through the chest wall. Um, and clearly she is not going to be a candidate for further surgery. We want to check the lymph nodes, which we'll talk more about um, during one of the other sessions, both in the axilla and in the internal mammary area. Although axillary lymph nodes can be quite large, so we're going to be looking more at the morphological characteristics, we usually do not see any internal mammary nodes, or not ones large in about 5 millimeters. so any internal mammary nodes um, should raise concern. Make sure you look outside of the breast before you finish. Look at the liver. Look at the lungs, check the mediastinum. We pick up a lot of incidental findings. Sometimes they're just um, liver cysts, for example, but we certainly do pick up hemangiomas and metastasis as well, and sometimes some other lesions. In this lady, for example, uh, and a pretty astute radiologist here, I don't think I would have seen this, so a little enhancing mass in the lingula. She went on and had a CT scan where this intensely enhancing peripheral mass was shown to be a small arterial venous malformation. You can see the feeding vessel coming off here. You'll notice I haven't mentioned looking at the kinetics of the enhancement yet, and we really like to do this right at the end to make sure we've looked through all the images and we're not biasing ourselves by looking at that kinetic study. So I found it most helpful to look at the um, MIP images first and then look at the individual slices um, looking for areas of enhancement. We're going to assess the kinetics of all the lesions that we saw on our initial going through the um, gadolinium enhanced images, the regular sequences, and then also look out for any additional lesions. If we see additional lesions on the CAD images, we're going to return back to the real data, the original data, and try and assess is this real or is this artifactual? Is this a vessel? For example, which are going to enhance, or is this a mass? Is this a normal lymph node, for example, that we may have blown off on our initial go-through of the images because we knew that was a lymph node? So what are we going to do with every image we see? Well, we have a number of choices. One, we can ignore it, and we do a lot of this, and frankly, this is one of the hardest things to do, learn how to do as a, a breast imager. You see a lot of stuff on breast MR. We know the specificity isn't good and you have to have a certain threshold. You can't call every patient back to work up five little lesions. So number one is, are we going to ignore it? Are we going to do a short interval follow-up? This might be a BIRADS 3A, which is a six-month follow-up MR conventionally, or it could be a BIRADS 3B, which is the ultra-short interval follow-up, usually in um, six weeks or sometimes less, depending on the time of her cycle, when we think that the enhancement was due to hormonal stimulation from her being imaged at the wrong time for cycle. Do we need to call her back for second look, ultrasound or mammography? We really want the radiologist interpreting the MR to direct management to that point. It might be that this is something that we think is a really low likelihood of being a real area of pathology, and if the second look ultrasound mammography is normal, then we're just going to call it BIRADS 1 or BIRADS 2 and um, see her a year later, if at all. It may be this is something that we think is probably going to be a BIRADS category 2. It looks like a fibroadenome on the MR. If that's confirmed by ultrasound, we'll just leave her for um, as a BIRADS 2 or at most do a short interval ultrasound follow-up. Or we may be using the ultrasound mammography to direct biopsy. Bi lesions are much easier to biopsy by ultrasound or stereotactically than they are by MR, and so that is our preferred means of biopsy if we can see them. There are some patients we're going to send directly to MR-guided biopsy. These are usually, if they're very small lesions, we think we're unlikely to see by ultrasound or we're concerned that we might not get a... Um, a an accurate correlation between a little ultrasound lesion and what's really present on the MR. Um, and we not infrequently send non-mass-like enhancement to straight to an MR-guided biopsy, as we know in many of these occasions we do not see anything by ultrasound or mammographically. Just to mention briefly, there are a couple of different interpretive theories of breast MR that were those proponents who uh, feel that the morphological characteristics of lesions are the most important. And so they want to have very high spatial resolution images following gadolinium, and they're going to be looking at 
the shape of the lesion, the borders, and so on, in a very similar way to mammography. Other radiologists uh, are more of the kinetic theory, and so they want very high temporal resolution images. Um, you tend to sacrifice some spatial resolution in these cases, and they are most interested in the pattern of enhancement for lesions. So lesions that have washout kinetics are going to bother them a lot more. I think the majority of clinical radiologists tend to use a combined approach, um, using looking at both the um, anatomical presentation of a lesion, is it a speculated mass, is it a smoothly marginated mass, for example, and the kinetic information from the um, pattern of enhancement, does it have benign enhancement characteristics or washout kinetics, and using some combination of these two to make our diagnosis. Luckily, it has the um, software and hardware for producing breast MR has improved. We can get really very high um, quality spatial information as well as high temporal resolution kinetic information within the same patient. Thank you for listening.